Awesome, and we're live. Hey, Charlie, hey, such a pleasure to have you on. Uh, looking forward to our chat. Hey, thanks for uh, having me. Happy to chat. Awesome. Hey, um, why don't you, I highly doubt someone doesn't know who you are, but why don't you spend a few seconds on who you are, what's your background, what's the currency you started, um, and then let's go in there. Yeah, um, I'm Charlie Lee. I started, um, I created Litecoin six and a half years ago. Um, yeah, been working at Coinbase and now I'm spending all my time on Litecoin. Can I ask, um, this is something I actually never really um, found somewhere. You were working for Google right before you started Litecoin, right? Yeah, I was working at Google when I created Litecoin and continued working at Google for a few years after that. And how, how did Google see that when you kind of worked in cryptocurrencies and then worked at their company? Were they open about that? Did they not know about that? Or was that really cool because they kind of encouraged people to have a side project? Mm, they didn't really know about it. I mean, it's a it's an open source project, right? So people, people work on open source all the time. So it wasn't really much of a thing when I started working on Litecoin when I was at Google. So I did, they didn't care. And, um, we at Tenex, we recently listed Litecoin and we want to do a Litecoin card to um, really kind of work together there deeply. Um, for people that might not be 100% familiar on is there a different vision between Litecoin and Bitcoin or what are the different directions? Um, let's get it from the horse's mouth. Like what was the vision when you started it? Where do you see the direction? What, sh what should this currency be doing? Um, well, I always see, I always saw Litecoin working close together with Bitcoin being kind of a complementary coin where people would use both Bitcoin and Litecoin for different purposes. Um, so I always saw that Bitcoin won't be the one coin that is the only coin. So because of Bitcoin's um, focus on uh, being the most uh, decentralized and censorship resistant coin, I always saw that the, fee the fees will go up. So Litecoin can play a role where it's uh, it's cheaper to use, but also, um, I guess, a little bit more centralized and a little bit less security. But so it can complement the company well in that aspect. How do you see that triangle? And I mean, I we are connected on Twitter, and I know your mm -hmm. opinion. But how do you see that triangle? Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin. Um, wh where do you see that place of Litecoin in there? Um, what do you mean by a triangle? I mean, it's just that I feel right now Bitcoin Cash tries to kind of sneak in there a little bit or try to do some things and uh, and, and they talk about lower fees as well. Um, and so with triangle, I'm not talking about a triangle that something is there. It's just that I, how do you how do you see that? How do you see maybe Litecoin and Bitcoin Cash or that's something? I mean, I know your opinion that you voice on Twitter, but what is what is is there? Anything? Yeah. So. I mean, Bitcoin Cash is very similar to Litecoin and like most of the altcoins out there where it's um, it has lower fees, right? There's less people using it, so it's not the blocks aren't full, so it's quicker. Um, the only difference with Bitcoin Cash is it, it wants to kind of replace Bitcoin, right? It thinks it basically wants to be Bitcoin, like a better Bitcoin. Um, but I think it's going to be, it's having a hard time doing that, right? So you can't, it's a, it's a trade-off. You can't have the cake and eat it too, right? It's trying to be, um, yeah. So, I mean, I think, I think it's the wrong approach trying to be in kind of also attacking Bitcoin's brand. Like the supporters are trying to say Bitcoin cash is Bitcoin. And the Bitcoin we have right now is actually not Satoshi's vision, so it shouldn't be called Bitcoin. I think it's pretty, all pretty silly. Yeah, um, I totally agree with you on this stance. Um, I see this very similar. Um, what always interested me was, I mean, one up and also downside that Bitcoin always had was that it didn't have a figure um, that actually could go on Twitter and post, and it was the leader of the cryptocurrency, if you want to call it. And Litecoin always has or had this with you. Um, how did you use this? How did you, did you use the, sometimes did you feel that you were, even though the cryptocurrency is decentralized from its consensus, but you were still, or you are still the leader and, you're, and, and your opinion weighs very heavy on what's happening. 
um, how did you use that or uh, how, how do you use that power, right? Great power, great responsibility. Yeah, it's always, um, it, it's a trade-off, right? So I think, I think it's great that Bitcoin's um, creators of those like a little left to see and it made Bitcoin more decentralized, right? If he's around, then everyone will kind of focus on him um, and uh, it's, it, makes the coin more centralized, which is the case with Litecoin. Litecoin is more centralized because I'm around. So it's it has a more centralized development team, has more centralized foundation. Um, if I kind of, I can help uh, steer Litecoin towards my vision and people will listen to me because I created it. Um, so the what's good about it is that uh, it, we, can, it can, we can be more efficient, right? I can, kind of steer Litecoin towards the direction I want to go and there's less uh, people calling something else the real Litecoin because of someone's vision, right? And um, con like a, a, a hard fork where there's there's a, a, like a split in the middle would be harder on Litecoin because, um, because of this. And the downside is it's centralized. So, or a little bit more centralized than Bitcoin. So if, um, if somehow governments or something um, coerce me into kind of destroying Litecoin, that could happen, right? Um, and yeah, and it becomes more less censorship resistant because um, if I have to, I can push for something that can hurt Litecoin and cause like kind of hurt, really hurt Litecoin. Whereas with Bitcoin, it's much harder to do that. What do you think? And I mean, let's unpack the, I don't know, the crystal ball, but going forward, what do you think does the right cryptocurrency need? Does it need some kind of leadership that people look up to and that makes a cryptocurrency a bit more nimble? Or does it need this complete decentralization, especially when you look at in regards, I mean, you mentioned a couple of things, getting pressure into doing certain things, but then the only thing that never changes is change itself. And so how can a system that's, very, very decentral and, and has, I don't know, as many different opinions as users, how can this thing adapt to, to I don't know, ever-changing environments? What do you think, or what, what, what would you think would be the best kind of um, smart rules, if you want to call it? Yeah, I think um, with a like, fully decentralized currency like Bitcoin, um, it's still doing fine, right? It's still adapting to things. It's still scaling. It's just a little bit slower. It's less efficient. It's kind of like... Um, I like to compare it between like the democracy versus like the uh, benevolent dictatorship, right? Democracy is better, right? It's, but it's less efficient. People fight, there's all this, these voices and you can't, can you hear me? I can. Okay, sorry, cut something. Uh, so um, with a benevolent dictatorship, it's more efficient, uh, you get stuff done, um, but then, there's a stable now, but right. So um, yeah, so there are trade-offs. Yeah. Have you ever thought about in its early days stepping away from the scene and, and just saying, you know what, um, I, I started it and now take this and, and go? Or and if and if if you have thought about it, why didn't you do it? Um but to be honest, actually I kind of stepped away for a little bit um, a few years ago. I mean, when I was focused on uh, Google and then Coinbase, I didn't really spend a lot of time on, on Litecoin. I was trying to help Bitcoin becoming more easy to use working at Coinbase. And I realized that was, I wanted to focus on that first. And then when, um, when Litecoin grew and became something that's really viable, I decided that I want to actually not spend like, full time working on it. Um, as for like the future, I think, um, Eventually, I would have to step away, right? For a currency to really be like a worldwide decentralized currency, you can't have like a real leader like behind controlling things. Um, so to, be, to make it more decentralized, eventually I'll step away. Was, be the best. was selling your stash of Litecoins a first step or did this have uh, different uh, reasons last year? It, it was definitely a first step. I think um, just the fact that I held Litecoins and could 
I didn't actually have that many Litecoins. So my selling Litecoins didn't actually affect the market uh, itself. Um, but the fact that I had Litecoins and people were thinking that I might dump it on the market actually uh, was an issue. Uh, and similarly, like Satoshi, people think he has a million Bitcoins, right? So if he decides to sell, it could really cause the market to crash. Um, so selling all my Litecoins was, was, I guess, the first step of kind of moving towards more, more of a decentralized currency. Um, it's a question that I asked you prior to when we went live and you said, hey, you can ask me the same question during the talk. Uh, do you ever regret it? Do you look at it right now and say, oh, darn, you know, I, maybe I should have just stayed or I should have just kept it? Um, I think it was, uh, I still think it was the right move. Um, but I question, I question it whether, like, I think for, for the long, for, in the long run, it was the right move. Mm. Uh, but the short run, in the short term, while the price is down, like below the all time high, it just feels like it's not the right decision. But I think like moving forward, like five years down the road when the price is back up over the all time high, then it would be, I would uh, feel like that would be the right move. Yeah. Cool. Um, I mean, you are so deep in the ecosystem and you're such a believer in, just like myself, in cryptocurrencies. Why? I mean, with LightPay, you you guys try to get something going, a connection from the crypto to the fiat world. Why do you think such a, a connection is actually necessary? I mean, I, I know an answer that we have here at Tenex because this is something we're working on right now, not in the long term, but right now. But why do you think it's necessary right now? Or why is it something that you actually need to focus on right now? Um, so right now, my main focus is um, adoption, and like merchant adoption in um, ways for people to actually use Litecoin. So the reason why um, connection to the fiat world is important is for merchants, because cryptocurrency is so volatile, merchants can't afford to, to hold on to their Bitcoins or Litecoins. They have to cash out to their local currencies like US dollar. So having merchant processors like um, uh, Coinbase or Unlight or Goldcoin or, or not be able to convert for merchants to accept Litecoin and convert it immediately to their local currency is really important. Otherwise, merchants can't really accept Litecoin today. So that's why we were um, very excited about um, partnerships like LightPay and others where they will help us um, work with merchants to convert to fiat. Another cool thing about what LightPay was uh, work, also working on was a uh, Litecoin debit card. So I think um, debit card, uh, crypto de debit card is cool, but it's not it's not really the end goal, right? It's kind of like a stepping stone where it's easy for users to um, hold on to Litecoin um, and still be able to spend it um, easily because not every merchant or most merchants don't accept Litecoin directly. So um, using a, a debit card backed by their Litecoin is something that's pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. What, what, I mean, stepping stone, it's exactly how we see this. I mean, our big picture at the end is completely different. We want to actually connect blockchains, but we have the debit cards right now because or we're working on them because we believe that's a very good solution. How do you see the transition? If we say, let's walk through the next 10 years of crypto finances, how do you see these years go by? How do you see adoptions as much as you could kind of foresee or, or kind of have as a vision? So, um, the, the goal is to make uh, spending crypto as easier easier than spending um, using uh, credit cards or however, whatever ways people are using or spending money, right? So uh, when I said uh, crypto debit cards is a stepping stone, what I mean is that right now they could be swiping a credit card or debit card that's backed by crypto, right? In the future, if the merchant accepts it directly, and you're swiping the card, uh, maybe the card can let you spend the cryptocurrency directly without going through the Visa network. Right? Of course, Visa and MasterCard is going to not allow that. Um, but I think it's in that world that we'll one day bypass them and spend uh, Litecoins directly. Um, and that's the goal, right? Where merchants will accept Litecoin and users will spend Litecoins. And, um, and right now, merchants will convert their Litecoins to fiat, 
but in the future that I'm envisioning where cryptocurrency becomes more stable and where fiat currency is actually the one that is very volatile and you know, um, hyperinflating, then the merchants will just keep their balances in, in crypto and it will be like a complete circle. How do you envision like governmental cryptocurrencies and public cryptocurrencies kind of interacting, kind of being a side of each other. Um, do you see more of Litecoin becoming more like, I don't know, like a like gold is today, like more as a reserve, like a safe haven? Uh, uh, how, how do you see that balance? Or how do you see these interactions? Um, I think it's inev inevitable that we'll have um, governments releasing their own cryptocurrency that's backed by um, the fiat currency. Um, but Bitcoin and Litecoin will always be uh, better because it's it's decentralized, right? It's not it's not controlled by any uh, third party. So I'll, I see them working side by side, like of like decentralized cryptocurrencies and government backed currencies and cryptocurrencies. Um, and yeah, I'm not exactly sure what, when that's going to happen and what would happen in the future, but yeah. Who would you, what would be the use cases of either like? What do you think? Who or or what? Maybe even what? Right? What what kind of thing would use the the governmental issued cryptocurrencies, and who would be using public cryptocurrencies? How how, how would you foresee that, or what would you see there? Um, so using it's kind of similar to why people are using fiat currency today, right? So um, they're kind of forced to use it to pay taxes, and uh, the governments can make sure that all merchants accept it, right? Whereas uh, public cryptocurrency is similar to gold and silver. It's like commodity and not every store would accept it, um, but it's a better kind of, better place to keep your money long-term. I mean, the Litecoin debit cards that we're gonna have, they're gonna be available for everyone. I mean, these are a lot of questions that people ask is, is this only available for the Litecoin Foundation? Is this only for people? Who I don't know who who only want to use Litecoin, but it's going to be available for everyone. What is what is your opinion? Like, why would someone get a Litecoin debit card versus just an unbranded one? What do you think is what are motivations behind it? Um, for one, Litecoin is much cooler. <laughs> uh, so I mean, I, I, let me ask you, right? So with a Litecoin debit card, can you um, have yours? credit or debit card purchases backed by another coin. I mean, that's something we can discuss. Um, at the moment, I, if you ask me right now on the spot, I would say I would allow the user to spend anything. Um, mm -hmm. I would, my personal opinion would be someone who is, who really wants to show flag for, for Litecoin gets the Litecoin debit card. And yeah, he might be using Ether on it and he might be using Bitcoin and he might be using other currencies on there, but he is a Litecoin supporter and he wants to show flag. And when he goes to a store, he wants to do a little bit of guerrilla marketing for Litecoin. That's how I would yeah. uh, see it. And on pictures and videos, that's that's what I think he just wants to support the community. Probably. Um, and I agree, there's no reason to lock it down to Litecoin. And they're probably going to be using Litecoin anyways if they uh, bought and are using the Litecoin debit card. Yeah. Have you. What's the yeah, sorry. sorry. What's the what's the status on your on your cards? If I um, remember correctly, you previously released a card, but had to um, cancel it. Yeah, Wavecrest so lost their license. Yeah. Yeah. What's the current status of, of your cards? Um, we have a solution right now for the U.S. Actually, Warren is um, might be interesting. I'm going to connect you to uh, Warren, who does the, all the U.S. He's flying to San Francisco actually tomorrow morning um, for some final things or some making sure that a uh, potential launch for the US would, uh, would be ready fast. Um, so we have solutions for the US. Uh, we have, we're in the process of getting our banking license in Europe. This shouldn't be taking too much longer. Then we can actually start issuing cards ourselves in Europe. We are working with a, a third party in Europe, but the question there is their speed versus what we would love to see. And then for Asia, we have another issuer um, at the moment there's, I don't know, there's roadblocks that, to be honest, I'm not even 100% sure why these roadblocks actually exist because when we try to clear that roadblock, um, 
there's another roadblock that before seemed to be cleared, right? And it's like, I don't know, you're just shuffling things around. Um, so uh, for me, a big thing is going to be when we have a banking license and we just can take matters in our own hand and that shouldn't be out uh, too much longer. I think that's going to be a big, big, big uh, stepping stone. Are we talking about a Visa or MasterCard? Correct. So then we can actually we can actually talk to either um, because we could start issuing with either. Then we can really issue ourselves. At the moment, we only always need a third party. Um, yeah. yeah, and that's just, and, and you rely on someone, right? And you rely on Wavecrest, for example, and they screw something up, and it's not your fault, but you're affected. And yeah, it's. It, yeah, this is it's just tough. I feel sometimes when you when you try to connect crypto and fiat, ah, oh, sometimes uh, yeah, it's unbelievable how slow and how dinosaur um, the fiat system is. Yeah, isn't um, Visa and Mastercard pretty um, pretty against working with with cryptocurrency? And I know that they have they previously had issues with putting any kind of Bitcoin, Litecoin, or crypto branding on the card. What what's your um, What's your experience with that? Yeah, um, they still don't like it as much. Um, however, there has been quite a breakthrough, and that breakthrough is just um, that you have the major challenge always was the source of funds, right? And so, how could you prove that the funds a user loaded onto, what was the risk score of these funds? And it's something that I think Coinbase was one of the first ones to actually do to check um, the history of the coins or check where these coins are coming from. This is something that we have started to do now. And and we just have risk scores where we can say, look, if it's just a no, you can never be sure. But if it's a really, really low risk that these light coins are, have been used or come from illegal activity, then they are way more open to that. Um, and the second problem has always been becoming the program manager yourself. So if you can actually manage a program yourself, that allows you to be way more flexible versus um, yeah, need, running under someone else's bin range. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that is, I mean, we're pretty, we're, we're really, really optimistic at the moment that we're going to have a solution out um, quite soon. Um, it's At the moment, it's a bit of a gamble which region is going to go first. Uh, we need to use different issues for Europe as we need to use for North America and Asia. So that's a bit of the, the gamble at the moment. Uh, Warren is flying to the US tomorrow. Um, I've spent quite some time in Europe uh, to get this working. And obviously, us in Singapore, we have good connections here. Um, yeah, and and then you have I don't know you have sometimes you have someone who's in holidays for three weeks and it seems that uh, at these companies and we are a startup and it's like what you have you need to sign off on certain things because you someone is in holidays for three weeks and no one else is allowed to sign this off right mm -hmm. yeah and and if this was a startup like ten x right where we're like sixty people and there's no redundancies then you're okay I can't understand this but wow you know you're a company and yeah there's a couple thousand people working there. Hmm. Um, yeah, it's always a bit uh, interesting and uh, kind of funny. So, no, but I am. I mean, we're we're really optimistic and we're um, we're quite confident that we can. The plan is. I mean, it's a really aggressive plan. We we want to uh, add more and more currencies over the next uh, weeks and months. And um, for us, it's going to be quality over quantity. Um, with that, we we we're definitely going to skip some coins out of the top ten or top twenty just because we don't believe in the vision and just because the price is high on coin market cap for us it doesn't mean that the value is high right it could it, yeah. it, and uh we are we're quite conservative uh when it comes to that um which is i think quite different than most of the people in the ecosystem <laughs> yeah so being like a uh litecoin um, fan let's say and they're really excited about this um give us a date <laughs> Put you on the spot, dude. I can't. I really wish I can. I have done. I have given a date three times already, and we have not made it. And it was not because we were we didn't deliver. We had everything there that we had to have there, and we got roasted by the community every single time. And I totally understand them. Um, I would probably roast someone as well. So you know, complete understanding. So I can't do this mistake one more time. Um, it's it's so tough, right? I think it's going to be different once we have what, when we have the banking license and we have a really good forecast, um, and then I can add a couple of weeks as a buffer. Then I can give a worst case scenario and saying, okay, latest by then because we have it under control. At the mm -hmm. moment, it's 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 really waiting. Even though things are signed and everything is agreed on, 
we're still waiting on third parties to move. And yeah, uh, if, if you would ask me ha half a year ago, I would tell you uh, it's going to be ready in two weeks. Um, but today I know even if we are ready in two weeks, that doesn't mean that they are ready in two weeks. It might take two months, right? So I hope, uh, I know this is not the date, but I hope you're going to uh, be okay with that answer. That's fine. I know you have a lot of um, backers of your coin that that have signed up and been waiting anxiously yeah. for this, right? Yes. How many how many people are we talking about? That's what uh, we're waiting. I think the exact waiting list is over a hundred thousand. Um, it's quite yeah. a list, and we have to and we have to replace all the old cards, right? And mm -hmm. we're doing this in our cost, obviously. So we need yeah. to replace all the cards that are out there. Um, and yeah, so that's. Yeah, sometimes, I mean, yeah, I, I'm sure you, I mean, I know you have this on Twitter as well. You you post something and all you see is when card, when card, when card, when card, right? And you, I don't know what you probably get when moon, when moon, when moon. Um, the, the really annoying thing is like 90% of those people actually don't really care about the card. They just want <laughs> the news to help the price go up. <laughs> How do you deal with that? How do you deal with trolls? How do you deal with haters do you mute them do you block them you just don't care i mean i see you are different to me because i actually hardly ever read my twitter feed right and you're actually someone who really responds and goes into conversations and i see this and i'm like wow i'm it's unbelievable how you actually take the time and just take up the energy and just kind of communicate with some of these people and really kind of explain things i'm like whoa you're 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 really patient with this <laughs> how do you how do you select how do you choose do you block how do you do that I, I block pretty pretty aggressively. I mean, oh, really? If yeah, if I block more people than <laughs> I block like thousands or tens of thousands of accounts. Sure. Um, over because uh, people like troll really hard, and it's it's annoying because um, it just like makes my Twitter feed um, impossible to to follow if I see all just people trolling me. Right. So. If you if you if you're trolling me or you're like cursing at me or, or keep complaining, I'll, I will just block you. Um, probably quite a bit of people get blocked um, by accident too. So sorry if I did that. <laughs> yeah. Um, how and how do you re how do you select when you respond? I mean, you get sometimes you get hundreds of replies. How do you select when you respond and when you don't? Or is it just coincidence? Yeah. If I if I manage to see your reply and. I feel like responding and I'll respond. I, res I think I respond a l uh, too much sometimes. Um, a lot of times I just can't let it go. Um, just people like complaining about why I sew and stuff like that. Yeah. It's hard for me to let it go. Uh, so I think I fight too much on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> which, one, which one stuck out? What fight stuck out that you're like, man, I shouldn't have done that? Well, actually, what what does stick out is when people ask me about like another coin. Um, a lot of people do that, right? They want they want me to support some other coin to help the price go up. And a lot of times, um, I just give my personal opinion. I don't like this coin. I feel it's whatever. I have issues, and then when I say something bad about a coin, like like all of a sudden my tweet gets posted in their Reddit, right, or whatever their forum that they talk about. And then like thousands of people start like attacking me. <laughs> That's when all the haters really come out is when I say anything bad about another coin. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I yeah, I always learn my lesson. I'm like, shit, I shouldn't have <laughs> said anything. I shouldn't have replied to someone asked me, what do you think about this coin? Even if I said like, I've never heard of it, like 10 people will say, I can't believe you never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> How do you spend your day at the moment? How much time do you spend on what? Um, I, mean, I guess I do spend quite a bit of time on, on Twitter. Um, I think it's kind of, it helps with the Guardian community and, and everything. Um, I spend time doing interviews, talking like, for example, like this, right? Just, um, promoting like Warner and our partners. Um, and I meet with a lot of people like merchants, merchant processors, exchanges, uh, just to talk about like, like Warner and like Warner adoption. Um, and, um, I'm currently I'm the managing director of the Lycan Foundation. Yeah. So just all the stuff that, that entails. And just spend almost most of my day working on like coin like an adoption. And just whatever is needed to help like people. Oh, I like that. Two questions in that, if I may. Um one is uh, ever thought about changing the consensus algorithm for Litecoin? And the second is 
ever thought about uh, removing the total cap and having, I don't know, a yearly inflation so the currency is not deflationary, or you think that's not necessary? Um, so you're talking about changing like the mining algorithm. Right? Yeah. So I, I don't think I'm going to touch that. Uh, I think it's it's fine that the fact that we have ASICs. Um, it's, I think for a coin, initially, like Litecoin was ASIC resistant. Mm -hmm. And what's important for that is, I think, when the community is really small, um, your miners are the people that are your, the, like the users are the miners, right? Yeah. And those are the people that are advocating for the coin. So it's important for those people, for that to be, like anybody can become a miner. And it was Litecoin was CPU mine. So anyone was, everyone was a mining, was a Litecoin miner that supported Litecoin. As the coin grew, it was not as important anymore for the miners to be anyone that can be a miner. So I think having ASICs is fine and it's really helped protecting the coin. Um, I think Litecoin is one of the, has this, one of the strongest mining network um, after Bitcoin. Uh, so I don't think we need to change the, the, the algorithm. Changing I mean, to a proof of stake or something no, I don't. I don't really believe in proof of stake. I think proof of work is still the best uh, consensus algorithm for for a decentralized currency. Um, proof of stake could be fine for for a coin like Ethereum, um, but I think for Litecoin, proof of work is still the best. Um, as for your second question about changing the, um, Cap the number of coins, I've actually thought of, thought about that quite a bit recently too. I think. Um, it's something that I'm thinking about whether uh, it's a good solution to propose to the community. Because um, no one, it's hard to say what's going to happen when we start reaching the limit. Because uh, right now, the coin is working, like Bitcoin Lightroom works because the, the mining reward is paying for the security, right? And when that goes to zero and you rely on fees, and if the fees aren't enough because the block size is constrained, Right then, what happens is security will drop. Mm -hmm. So, is it better to have like a, some constant small amount of inflation every year, um, have that fixed and have that pay for pay for the security, or can act can actually transaction fees be enough to pay for the security? Like we won't really know until like many years later down the road. But it's something that I'm kind of thinking far in the future of what would happen because it'll be much harder to change when the time comes when like security is. The network is dropping, yeah, and uh, and you have like hundreds of or whatever hundreds of millions of users. It's much harder to change when that when it's so decentralized. Yeah, what's your gut feeling on it? What do you think? Which what's going to be the right direction? I don't know yet. Mm. I don't know yet. I think um, unless there's a really good reason to change it, uh, it's better to just let it be. So I'm yeah something I'm thinking about but nothing, nothing concrete, yeah. Cool, uh, maybe at the end, personal question, what uh, outside of the crypto ecosystem is, what uh, what do you spend time on? What uh, kind of encompasses Charlie Lee's uh, time on a daily basis? Um, outside of crypto. Outside of crypto. Watching TV. <laughs> uh, what do you watch? Uh, Netflix, I like to watch some Netflix shows. Uh, I like movies. Which ones? Any any good ones that you want to share? Any good ones? Um, let's see. What did I watch recently? Um, like Stranger Things is good. I like Game of Thrones. Um, HBO shows are great. Um, yeah, Silicon Valley. It's cool. Ah, show. yeah, definitely. Are you the binge watching type, or are you like the one who just yeah, as soon as the new episode comes out, uh, you watch it, or you like you stack them up, and then it's like I don't know, a full weekend full of watching. <laughs> <laughs> I watch whenever I have time. Um, yeah, so neither. I don't like watch it whenever things come out, and I don't don't have really have time to to watch like many episodes of it. So I'm always behind them. Yeah. There's there's so many good shows these days on TV. Yeah. It's, it's really gotten a lot better. They, sh they, they should make a, a show on crypto, like all the drama that's there and all the, the craziness. I, honestly, I think it would help for mass adoption, and I think it would, it would help for people to understand it in a, in a simple and fun manner. I really think so. Yeah, 
that, that could be fun. I mean, I, I've heard of projects doing like shows on crypto. We'll see how those pan out. Yeah. yeah. Golly, awesome. Hey, any final last smart words that uh, you as a very old crypto legend have uh, for people watching? Um, I mean, I guess in a sense, um, there's never a boring day in, in cryptocurrency. So it's kind of like a TV drama. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. Awesome. Cool. Hey, I'm gonna stop this. I'm gonna say thanks for the community watching. Um, uh, yeah, be ready. I hope when you watch this at some point, hopefully the cards are gonna be out uh, with Litecoin and you're gonna have a lot of fun with this. So thanks, Charlie, so much. I'm so excited about this and uh, looking forward to working together and do more of that. Thanks so much. Thanks, Julian.